welcome. Uh, we are at the second annual uh, Prototype Toronto League Open. Uh, we're about to start round one. I'm Emily. I'm Sumit. So all the players today have made three lists, and across those lists, they can't repeat uh, named pilots. Correct, yeah. Uh, at the beginning of each game, they secretly select one of their lists to play, and they mark it on that card. And uh, yeah, so it's always a surprise. We never know what we're going to see. Yeah, exactly. That's the, the prototype in the prototype trial. League. That's we right. always try to uh, concept an interesting thing. So there's a, it's an interesting format where if you play all of your lists at least once, you get a free win in the tournament, which is an incentive to try to keep the variety going. And if you play each of your lists twice, so if you only ever fly a list twice, you actually get a sweet uh, custom uh, acrylic art prize that we're giving out. I believe it's Force Tokens. Yeah, Force Tokens. So, yeah, yeah, we got some really cool prizes up for grabs. We're so. making it rain this season, as always. So one of the reasons why we wanted to pick this this uh, setup, we actually, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, we didn't actually know what the players were going to play, but we wanted to get some cool players on there. Now, Garrett's visiting us from Ottawa. Um, he's, he, I believe he was here last season as well for the PTL Open, and I, I was walking around the floor early, and I saw that he had interceptors, and I'm like, oh, I really hope he flies these. <laughs> so we were hoping to get that, and Ryan, is if you, people would have seen the channel if you've watched it, you've probably seen his name come a couple times. He's, he's a multiple top eight finisher. He's a great player from the local community. He's an overall awesome guy. He's really a joy. He's not, not scared to go on stream and all that kind of stuff, too, so... We ha got lucky in a very interesting <laughs> matchup today. We're very excited to see this matchup. Yeah. All right. So um, on Ryan's side, we've got four Sigma Squadron Aces, all with Juke. So very simple, but mm -hmm. very effective, I'm mm -hmm. sure. So some changes to the Sig to the Phantoms this from 2.0 from 1.0 is they got that free hull upgrade. Uh, but the advanced cloaking device is gone. So there's no way that you can now fire then cloak. So they actually always have to rely on their two evade dice. So, and as a as somebody who loves phantoms myself, it's it's an interesting change to them because they, they've become a lot more uh, affordable to fly them. Like the fact that you can fly four, it just shows you how cheap they've gotten. Right. Uh, but they also can pop like X wings can because they're the same difference. They're three and two, just like X wings are, and they're you know three two. Very reliant on positioning. Exactly. Now. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they do have that added benefit of being able to cloak and all the other kind of cool stuff. And the juke is a bit rough to have four copies of it on a list. So it is a very interesting list, but it's. It's very interesting to see the kind of stuff that 2.0 is bringing out now the, with the with the changes to the way the ships have all figured out. Absolutely. And on uh, Garrett's side, we have just five Saber Squadron Aces. Another thing you would never see in 1.0, <laughs> exactly. which is amazing. So everything to, right now is at um, Initiative 4. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see who gets, um, what like do it, they call it, the it, player first order? Player? I think it's first player. <laughs> I still want to call it initiative. We'll call it not. initiative. It's, it's pilot skill? Or wait, no, wait, they changed it. No, play. It's called initiative now. It's not PS anymore. Right. right well, whatever. We're calling <laughs> See, it we PS. don't know what we're talking about. I still use 1.0 shields. I don't flip them. I take them off. Yeah. So what do you think we're going to see from setups on each side here? You think they're going to be all just blocks? Hmm. I feel like for Ryan here, I don't think he wants to fly them as a block just because that gets a, yeah, the right, the decloaking can get a little bit of a, a little bit to manage, especially if you shouldn't try to go through the rocks, but I don't know, he might have something planned. I think he might try to run them as pairs, two and twos, and then try to decloak them into a formation potentially. I also am not sure how much experience he has in this list, so maybe he's just going to try to play around and have fun. Um, no, maybe he's going to run them a little bit closer together. That could be interesting too because... It could just be a joust off. Right, that's exactly it. It could, it, that could be what he's going for because I guess if you're in, you know, if you're the, uh, the Phantom Swarm, if you do that decloak before the joust, you're sitting on a pretty good token stack. You've got Focus Evade and you've got Jukes. So he might just be hoping that he's going to have... Well, actually, it looks like he's also going to have uh, initiative because he's placed all of his ships first, which means he'll be shooting first. I mean... He's not going to be able to PS kill anything, so whatever ship he kills is still going to sit on the board and be able to attack. So technically, Garrett's got one, two, three, four, five uh, Fells Wraths on the board, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> right. Only in 2.0. <laughs> Fells Wrath is still alive. Exactly. We're keeping him in our hearts. Whereas, I don't know if I was Garrett, I think I might do like a three, like three of them and then two of them to split them up to kind of pincer Ryan's forces, but he might just also keep them all together too. I don't know. Yeah, the interesting thing about this format with three lists is, you know, how much practice can any of these players have with all three of their lists? Like, they might bring one that they're really, really good with, and yeah. two that they're like, oh, this seems fun, so we'll see what happens. Especially considering we're only about a month in, unless you were proxying the games beforehand, but, like, I think I've only played, like, less than ten games myself. 
Well, you got 10 more than me. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, they're all the ships I knew how to fly. They were Phantoms and Defenders. That's it. That's all I was doing. I love that we're back now to the X-Wing I remember, where you just put as many ships on the board as you can. Yeah. You look like a nail. I agree with you. It is interesting to see how many, uh, how that you can get a lot of viable uh, low PS ships or that all ships seem to have come back. Like when would we ever, when would you ever conceivably just take an Interceptor by itself in previous editions? You ne- yeah, maybe you never you, saw them. Maybe when you were playing earlier on, right. you seeing it a lot, but because you got into the game pre auto thrusters. Right. Uh, my boyfriend used to run a swarm that had some ties and some tie Interceptors, mm. but that was a really long time ago. You wouldn't see that. And that's the all the interesting thing that's happened now. Like, ostensibly, there is no more auto thrusters. Like, auto thrusters are still in the game, but now it's that gives you the ability to boost your barrel roll on the interceptor right. after you've done an action. So, every interceptor can now PTL like the old-fashioned days, except it can only be a boost or a barrel roll. Um, so they can't, but they can't token stack like they used to, and even sooner fell can't token stack like he used to. So you're flying them completely different than you used to in 1.0, which is absolutely really making the game feel very, very fresh as well. We might actually just get a straight-up joust off. You know what? That's my favorite kind of X-Wing. Good old-fashioned clean, just, just fly at each other and throw some dice? Throw dice. Yes, that's the thing. I don't know if Ryan's going to want to do that. I think he's going to maybe want to try to get the rocks to help him. or I don't know if maybe he's going to want to go like 4-4 and then evade so then he can cloak and then get into that space that's down there at the board, where the, the direction of the board he's facing. Yeah, I agree. I, don't, I think he's... Out firepowered on the other side, he doesn't. He wants to get the positioning advantage. Yeah, but now depending on how aggressive Garrett is, he could fly forward and then focus boost with all of them on the first turn and potentially have maybe the front three in arc. I don't know. Now that big asteroid might be blocking his uh, interceptor five from doing that, so maybe that guy might peel off and and wean through the rocks, like three bank or something. But we'll see. It could be interesting. I might have to try this list. This seems awesome. I think <laughs> I might actually totally have five interceptors. I'll probably crash them all into each other, though. That's too much. That's too much. Uh... You just have to keep flying them straight, then you're that's, good. Okay, that's good, yeah. <laughs> the key also I found with Phantoms is to not de- to not decloak them off the boards. <laughs> like Kate turned uh, Whisper off the board the other day. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you know. All right, we've got some movement happening. So here's a tip to also, if you, uh, for newer players as well, coming into 2.0, the, our own uh, Pal- Palpatine kind of pointed this out too. Generally, as a Phantom Flayer, the first thing you do on every turn is you maneuver and you cloak. However, with the changes to the way the Phantoms operate, it actually makes more sense for you. Well, it depends on what you're thinking, but it's never a bad choice to do your maneuver and then just take the evade on the opening turn because on some small miracle that you get into an engagement, you could potentially have that juke available and then you can still spend your vay at the end of the round to cloak anyways because that's how the cloaking mechanism works now at the end of um i think it's the cleanup phase or the end of active at the end of combat you can then spend an evade token right to acquire a cloak token so you could theoretically be able to attack and then unless of course you just want to be secure with the evades oh this is an interesting setup ryan's got i like it yeah kind of covering all of his angles here Open boats. We're just going to confirm with the list. I think he might actually have shield upgrades in all the ships, but we can just double check on the interceptors. Does his list have uh, shield upgrades on all of them? Well, we can you know we can check so FFG's official. It looks like Garrett is just going for the five straights that you called. I love it. I, I love, love it too. I love the aggression. Because I mean, if you're running five ships, and I think if he does actually have the shield upgrades on all of them, he's got he's got the kind of the halt of spare, right? Oh, we should point out for everybody at home that this is, in fact, obviously, because it's not an official tournament, it's an extended tournament, all available ships that have been released with the conversion kits are viable and allowed to be used. Which makes sense with our format of having to bring three lists. Exactly. <laughs> and we should also point out, in case you're curious, they don't each have to be from a separate faction. We, we have many players in our, in our player base that don't um, carry multiple factions. Absolutely. Not everybody's a maniac like me and then carries everything. Um, so if you're just an Imperial player, you can bring three different Imperial lists, just as long as you don't have Vader ship and Vader crew or stuff like that. Right. Looks like we are back to planning. Do you think had Garrett done the boosts, he would have been in range of that last Phantom? He might have been, but he might. Maybe he wanted to be able to approach it on his on his own terms. So maybe he didn't want to force something too much because now he's got the option to one bank everybody, two forward everybody, right. and kind of see where Ryan's going to decloak. 
Huh. We we should confirm his Digital. list. I was gonna say yeah. All right, well, yeah. So actually, th uh, good catch. Open boats. I had to actually open up the squad builder up. So a saber squadron is forty point base. Uh, with the shield upgrade, that would make them each 48. So you can only fly four of them with the shield upgrade. So he actually is going to have five of them naked because that's 40. Where's the math there? One, two, three, four, five. That's 200. I should have been able to figure that out. But <laughs> yeah, we're on it, guys. We're sorting out the uh, the shield upgrade difference. That'll be coming up. So there you can see Ryan doing his decloaks, acquiring the evade tokens from the new... Uh, that's the, the ship ability built in directly to the Phantoms now. And that's one of the cool things I've seen from... 2.0 is they have the ships all have these, some of these ships have these chassis abilities now where it's old upgrades that used to be stapled on have now kind of been moved to the ship so the ship can really function the way that FFG might have thought it was and supposed it to function. And it leaves it so you don't even need to put upgrades on these ships anymore. Exactly. Because like, they function the way that they're supposed to function. Exactly. Like in the case of the Avian Interceptor, almost you would never take an Interceptor without push the limit. So now they've been able to build it directly in with the, and they kept the auto thruster naming convention alive and after you create an action, you can always do a boost or a barrel with an interceptor, and you get a stress from it. So it's it's built into the ships that you feel they should be built into. And the interceptor is still the only ship in the game that currently that I know of that can actually do a boost into a barrel or a barrel into a boost. Every other ship has to choose that specific way that goes on. Like even the A-Wings only have a specific way it works, and the right. Fang Fighters, I think, can only do one or the other. They can't do both. That's right. So the interceptors still hold that kind of place in our heart of exactly the double repositioners which i feel that def definitely should be it's a high highly expensive ship that's all about mobility and positioning this is this is we're gonna see some fireworks i think oh yeah this first for turn. sure and actually maybe this might actually be to ryan's benefit because he's gonna have double token stacks and i think he you're probably going to see a hard ones or hard twos from the other two Phantoms. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because he doesn't want them not in this fight, which yeah. is clearly about to happen. Yeah. I kind of like the way he's also spread them out, because now he has the option to decloak them in all, uh, multiple directions. So Right. And it's not just going to be a matter of K turning behind your opponent. He's got some more options after this initial engagement. Absolutely. And depending on how many Phantoms he has left after this attack, he might not even need to decloak them or cloak them after the fact. The question is, what does Garrett do? Does he just slam into everybody and just try to get as many range one shots as he can? With They're trading the same amount of dice now. The, the the Phantom's been reduced to attack dice now down to three instead of four where it used to be. Which, I gotta say, I have, you know, with how many of them you can put into the board and how cheap they are, that makes sense to me, that change. Yeah, absolutely. For, oh, it's just Aaron talking about how the prize wall works. So if you've never been to a PTL Open before, we basically make it rain prizes constantly. It's just prizing everywhere. We have more prizing, I think, than we have attendance. It's <laughs> That's awesome. absolutely true. Yeah. It's even better now for some newer players, too, who maybe not have had a lot of... Like, a lot of us have been playing for a while, have a lot of 1.0 swag that we might not even need anymore. We have a lot of acrylics that we were donating out. Like, I know, I think I threw in a couple of system open target locks and... Some other stuff that I was like, and you're overwhelmed with stuff at some point. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, a lot of us have a lot of things, and there's a lot of donations that go into just regular league play, and we stash it up all mm -hmm. year long just for this big open because we love having everybody come out and visit us and have some fun playing X Wing. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're going to get a range two engagement on this opening spot. I think Garrett was probably hoping he would get a three, which is maybe why he didn't do the boosts last turn, because at least he can get that dice advantage. Now, he does have evade die uh, advantage as well in this situation, so he'll be throwing three to Ryan's two. I'm curious about the arc on that number one interceptor. Is that even going to have a shot this round? Good question. He might only be able to clip like uh, if Phantom he, one or Phantom two. Had he done the one bank that mm -hmm. you talked about, he I feel like he would have been better lined up for like a joust type situation. But it's hard to tell on the screen. He might still have perfect arc. Right. Miazrim, that's actually depends on the players if they're gonna do rim shots on their own. We got drum we're up we're playing out of a legion over here and there's a uh, existing band. So here we go, we're checking initial arcs. So it looks like Ryan has picked the, he's activating uh, Phantom number two, it looks like. And he's firing on, I believe, uh, Interceptor three. That's a pretty good opening vol volley. Yeah, for sure. Two, two hits. hits. He's going to juke that evade down to a focus. And then I think I spend the focus to keep the ship as live as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So net nothing. 
I imagine we will see the rest of the phantoms all bully the same interceptor. I feel like now that you have that token gone on the opening shot, you've got to. It makes the most sense for me. So he's act uh, Ryan's activating uh, ship four. You can see he's been on stream before. He's pointing at the ship that he's picking, and <laughs> he's no he's no stranger to stream play. Unfortunately, we always make him come on stream. That's what you get for being good players. Yeah, he's an expert now. I feel like he's been here more than I have. <laughs> well, that's a real good roll. Yeah. When in doubt, just roll natties. And he's going to juke one. So Ryan's going to have to take two on that because he's got no more of no a token left. And yeah. that poor saber is now sitting on one hull only. And that's the thing with all thrusters being gone from the game. Traditionally in 2.0, that would have been that would have been zero damage. Oh, that's true. Because he would have had the three evades because of model yeah. thrusters. I like that the game. Sorry, go, one, one damage. My apologies. Right. The games go a little bit faster now in 2.0, which you know what? I don't think any of us are mad about. No, I mean, I, 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 sometimes the problem is we have we forget. It looks like one hit, one focus. You'll spend that, I think, for sure. He's yep. got the advantage. He's trying to put that ship out, and ooh, juke one, and that's going to be a dead interceptor. Yeah, absolutely. Which again, it's Fel's wrath, so it'll stick around. So I would imagine now at this point, Ryan's not. Don't take it off the table. Don't, don't leave it. There we go. There's Ryan <laughs> correcting his opponent. It's classy. As always, our players are always classy, trying to help each other out and make sure we're, we're, we're playing well. We should actually point out, that's a good example right now. So, Chad, if you're curious, if anything comes up, um, questionable call or that kind of thing, we're, we're just here to commentate. We are not getting involved in the game state in any sort of way. We have judges, we have marshals. Players know they can run the rules on their own and they can talk to who they need to talk to. We're not going to get involved in the game state. Right. Spend that focus. So I'm thinking Ryan's moved over to Interceptor 5 now because there's no need for him to fire. I believe you're correct. So now Ryan... Garrett's deciding whether or not to spend because he's, he's worried about being so token-starved. So Ryan's finally out of Phantoms to fire. <laughs> but you can see the, the two Interceptors that had the better shots mm -hmm. are now tokenless. Yeah. So that was well played on Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. That was a good engagement. And the way he split up his Phantoms now, it's, it, as you were saying, he's going to probably... Gary's probably going to have to focus on Phantom 1. Yeah, absolutely. Provided his Interceptor 1 can actually target and hit Phantom 1, which I think... He's probably going to pick the one... He's going to activate the one that is dead. He's activating Fel's Wrath. <laughs> oh, hit crit. Nice. And that's going to have to spend the evade or choose if he wants to be able to decloak or cloak at the end of the round now. Again, here it is. You know, Phantoms are not as, you know invulnerable as they used to be right like if this was a 1.0 those all would be cloaked and this would be basically impossible for garrett to get any damage through. yes but now right. phantoms are super fallible and, and ryan has decided to take the two on the shield so that he can still hold on to his juke token or his evade token to cloak next round now it'll be or interesting he may have to spend it on another one of these shots exactly but... and it looks like garrett's gonna try to focus all of his fire on that phantom now as well here comes the next one that's nice. a real good roll and now ryan's probably gonna have to spend the evade token and as we should point out in 2.0 now, that doesn't add an evade result. It changes one of your available results to an evade. And that's a crit. We'll wait for the table audio to tell us which crit it was. There you go. Stunned pilot. After you execute a maneuver, if you moved through or overlapped an off obstacle, suffer a damage. Yeah, that's the one thing I've been feeling a lot too, that uh, the crits are... Far more substantial in one in two point than they were in one point oh. They've they're a lot rougher, and that's why you've seen an overall push down on um, shields. They want to get the crits more relevant into the game. It felt like, and and you really do feel them. It looks like Ryan used all of his luck on his attacks. Yeah, there's an additional hit, so that phantom sitting on one life. I think Garrett will be really happy if he can trade one for one. He'll still have the ship advantage. If he can get that phantom off the board, he'll be a really happy guy. I think. Yeah, for sure. I think this is a range two shot. Ooh, is that oh. double eyeballs? <clears throat> I can hear them rolling their dice. Yeah. <laughs> There's two hits, so you just gotta get one through. Oh, oh devil evade. Just what Ryan needed. I'm sure Gary's disappointed with that. I think he would like to have gotten one phantom off the board before he lost one of his interceptors. <clears throat> so now Ryan is in this phase where he can decide whether or not he wants to cloak or, or not any of his ships. It looks like he wants to cloak. It looks like cloak. he's going to spend those cloak. He's going to spend those evades for those cloaks. 
The Phantom One will not have a cloak token because it had to spend its evade to survive that round. And it did. Yes, it did. Ryan's probably really happy about that. Yeah. Yeah, I would be really happy, to be honest with you, I'd be really happy with that exchange. To now have an extra Phantom that he can use to to bump, because he's going to move first, so he can get that Phantom in there and use it as a blocker. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say the same thing. I think he might push Phantom 3 forward on the decloak action, and maybe Phantom 4 will decloak back and left, uh, ship left, and then I, th- I feel like he's going to like drift everybody board left, in my personal opinion. Um, and use continue that... the joust. It's been going in his favor. Yeah, if he can stop some of the actions on the interceptor side with some bumps, then that's great. And, you know, yeah, like you said, back and left. That'll be huge. Especially because no matter what happens, he's going to have in three of eight tokens anyway. So he doesn't even mind if it... He'll also actually have been able to maneuver as well, so he will have his focuses as well. So it's also being interesting to see how, you know, uh, initiative or pilot skill or whatever we're calling it in 2.0 now it is really Im- important in different respects. It almost feels as if, like I've always felt for Phantoms, you always want to decloak first and move first and get that action off because it's super helpful for them. I mean, but that was back in the advanced cloaking device days. You right. wanted to fire yes, at the cloak token and hide behind that. But in the way this list is set up, this, this four Phantom list, it really does feel like a very maneuverable joust list. Mm-hmm. So you want those tokens and you want those arcs. Because you don't want to really run with them, right? It's still nice to have the player order in your favor so you have you know where everything is going to be mm-hmm. when once you've done your decloaks. Mm-hmm. I actually can't remember. Did Interceptors have one Banks? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> it's been a while. I mean, I should have known. I was flying Sooner Fell the other day, but when does he do? I think they might have them. No way. They probably, I don't know. Somebody will correct me. Chat, we're looking to you. Yeah, exactly. Let me see. It's taking me four and a half minutes to add a ship to this amazing squad builder round. I should be using Yazb. Where is the interceptor? There it is. It does not have one bank, ah. just one hard. Perfect, there you go. Okay, so he's going to have to go quicker. He's going to have to do two banks, or does he one hard everybody? I don't know if you like that either. And then you're pointing, you're pointing directly at rocks. Thanks for coming to the rescue chat. So it does look like he decloaked the way Ryan decloaked the directions I thought he might. Uh, which means I'm expecting Phantom 3 will do a hard one ship right. Uh, Phantom 4 will probably do the same, and then Phantom 2 is probably going to do the one bank. And then, yeah, so he's looking to jam the dead Phantom in there. It makes perfect sense. Causes much problem. He blocks the hard 2 on, on uh, Interceptor 1. Uh, he blocks the 2 bank on Interceptor 2. He blocks the 2 forward on Interceptor 4. What are the K-turns on the Interceptors? It's Might we see that one of those? 3 and 4, I believe. A f- a four or is it 4 and 5? One or the other. Either way, a fast one would be really Now, the Interceptors good. did gain sloops in this edition. So they have a, th- a 4K and 3 sloops. Ah, okay. I wasn't yeah. close. Oh, it's the Phantoms that have 3 and 4s. That would be actually interesting, yeah, because this, this I'm is the sure, first time they've had three sloops. I'm sure Garrett saw the block from that Sigma coming, mm. so. Yep, so there's the hard one. The one bank. So let's just see if I was right with four. Because the one bank will put him on the rock, so I don't think he did that. Yeah, okay. This is just a game of testing if you can call the moves. Sometimes, apparently. (laughs) It's also good. That means that I maybe could try try this list. Now, it's interesting with whether or not is he going to barrel roll, or is he going to just sit there and hope he catches something with that arc? He's just going to focus and take what comes. Well, I don't think he'll be taking any shots on him if he stays there, so... Mm. All right, now we see what Garrett did. This is going to be an interesting turn. It's going to be a bump city, it looks like. Oh, it looks like a bank. Yeah, the two bank. Yeah, so we're going to have to do a little bit of jostling and positioning and moving. We'll be able to use the new wonderful line marks that are on the templates now. Everyone's favorite part of X-Wing. To be honest with you, I actually like the new lines being added on there and the hash marks. Oh, it's, for sure. It's, it's way really more helpful. It's really helped clean up one of the more less exacting moments of this game.
So we see a bump. B PUBG Liese or is that Pugliese? Whichever one. Sorry if I butchered your Twitter type name. So you're saying that you're you're not a fan of where three and four D cloak because you were thinking that position only works if TK turned, which I see exactly what you're saying, and as you're seeing it unfolding now, this might actually not be so bad for Garrett because Ryan's actually not gonna have as many shots this round with his phantoms, whereas Garrett might end up with multiple range ones on one of his phantoms because of that K yeah, because of him not K turning. That's the other tricky thing about flying phantoms is when you, you instinctively always want to take the cloak token because you want that extreme maneuverability, but there are times Sometimes when... Sometimes it hurts you. Yeah, there are times when the best thing to do is to not decloak or to not cloak at all, really. Right. But you do also want that evade token and the whole reason why they work. So they're very interesting to fly, and I could really see myself wanting to try this uh, four phantom list. Yeah, it would definitely take some practice to figure out where you should and shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. All right, we got a little bit of the YouTube chat up now too, so uh, we'll try our best to balance it back and forth between both chats. Thank you everybody for joining us in both locations on Twitch and on YouTube. We appreciate you watching the channel, watching the stream, and joining us this early morning for some awesome X-Wing. Um, I mean, the benefit, I guess, for, for Ryan is that if he's bumped all these ships, you know, he's not taking any mod shots, and he still will have one modded shot, but... Um, so I, th I wonder now if Garrett is going to use the Afterburner ability for a boost... So actually, it's a good time for us to talk about the new barrel mechanics in 2.0. Yeah, we just saw it. Yeah, so as you, if you saw, yeah, he is going to use the afterburners for the boost. Um, but he's probably still going to be, no, he might have dodged the arc of that phantom. Um, so in 2.0 now, when you want to do an, a, a barrel, what you do is you take your range one template, now that it has the line mark down the center, you line it up with the center hash mark of your ship's base chit. Right. And all barrel rolls now start from that middle position. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of things, you can only rest your ship at the uh, frontmost part of your ship, the midpoint of your ship, or the rear point or, of the ship. Right. And they were, uh, FFG was saying that the whole idea was, well, boosts only give you three potential options. Why would barrel give you infinite? So it's kind of like brought, brought everything more in line and cleanliness. And to be honest with you, I don't actually mind the change at I all. like the change. It's clean, it's simple, and I mean, it was a, a game of millimeters before that when you were able to kind of slide <laughs> right. that extra little bit out. But it actually has kind of helped medium-based ships because... They can move a little bit more forward than you thought they would be able to the way in the oh, new rules. Oh, that's true. That's true. We'll see if we get any. Yeah. Yeah, this is a little bit of a jumble in here, but it looks like that almost dead phantom is not going to be taking any shots. Yeah, and it's so going to survive. he'll be alive another round to, you know, take shots or whatever, which is always helpful. Yes. Now, the only problem now, though, is that is that, well, we'll see after done, Ryan's done firing. Let's see what's left on the board. Two hits again. And that's going to juke one. And that's the ship that unfortunately does not have the focus, so he's going to take that hit. Right. And that'll be Interceptor 1. That juke is so powerful with the Phantoms it and their really ability. Is. It really is. I really love that upgrade on them. It's the only EPT worth taking in the Imperial Faction, in my personal opinion. I mean, I mean, maybe you can make a, a, a case for outmaneuver on some ships, or crack shot, of course. Crack shot's always good, but, like... On a Defender or on a Phantom, it's almost stapled to the card. Yeah, for sure. Which is, luckily for me, the only two ships I fly, so. All right. Ooh, there's a crit. Is he going to spend the focus? He's thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is. He wants to get that damage in. Juke one. And the ship he's shooting at also has no tokens because he bumped. Yeah, I don't think actually Garrett has any tokens this round. And no, got a crit yeah. through as well. So, so far, Ryan's taking chances on his uh, token spending, and they've come out in his favor both times. Each time he was able to spend that focus, he's been able to force a crit through. We're just waiting to uh, find out from the board what crit that was that went in. Checking for arc here. Yeah. Range two. Yeah. So it actually, honestly, has looked out that all things considered, um, this round is actually, he's going to have three attacks. So Ryan actually has a pretty good round for himself here. Yeah. There's another two hits on a tokenless phantom. So he's going to, sorry, a tokenless interceptor, which is going to be two through, and that's going to get him. 
So fan, uh, Interceptor 1 just died as well, which will be taken off at the end of the game, at the end of this round of combat. So we've got another Fel's Wrath on the board. <laughs> Is that what we're just going to call any ship I that am. lives through? I yeah. am, I think so, in my heart of hearts. At least when they have the same initiative or we can, we can experience that. Right. <laughs> I'll just pretend that that's not the way the game normally works and he just turned into Fel's Wrath. All right, so it looks like Garrett's weighing his options here. Yeah, I think he's looking for target priority, see if there's anything he can get down. If Ryan can escape this round with, a, with without losing another Phantom, it's huge mm. for him. He's still got a lot of tokens on the board, too. Yeah. So I think if I'm, yeah, there you go. It's a hit, hit, crit on Phantom 2, I would guess. That's, that's oh, going to hurt. Fa on Phantom 3. It was oh, okay. range 1. That's oh, why okay. there's four red dice. That makes sense. Yeah. Two shields. <laughs> so unfortunately, it looks like Garrett put Garrett? all of his damage into range one shots instead of focusing all of his fire on one ship. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to spread his fire out now. Um, those four red dice aren't doing much either without tokens. Yeah, we're seeing, we are seeing that that's one of the big changes in 2.0 as well now is that the, you're not token stacking every single ship anymore and, and you're really needing dice variants to come back into the game to either go or with you or with against you. So that's going to be a hit crit through. Garrett's just, uh, sorry, Ryan's deciding whether or not to spend his evade, which he will have to at some point anyways considering that Phantom is going to take three more shots. Took the shields... Yeah, had that been Hull, we might have seen him spend it, but mm -hmm. it was just shields. And actually, I did make a mistake. He's actually going to take one more shot after this because uh, Garrett used both of his range ones on that other Phantom. Oh, there we go. Is that just a crit? Just a crit. Oh. There's the evade. Yeah, the dice don't seem to be on Garrett's side here. I mean, he didn't have tokens, so. And that's the other thing I'm feeling that like you're noticing a lot in, in this edition is that when, if, thinking about spending, when you spend, how you spend, it's it's added that back into the game that was, I think... Oh, absolutely. We had lost that along the way by 1.0 because everything had every token and every mod and everything was always full damage, full of aid, full everything. You knew Everything whether yeah. lived or died instantly. There was no mid-ground. Now there's a <laughs> lot more of this. You know, like Ryan made it through last round with a ship that theoretically shouldn't have been alive. That was huge for him. It bumped and set up all this chain of bumps. And yeah. now he's got, you know, he's got a lot of wounded phantoms now, which... Garrett can, had to split his fire, which isn't what you want to do. Although exactly. there, you, he does have... Oh, he doesn't have half points on those yet. No, he does not, exactly, which is also a new change in 2.0. You have to get... You have to exceed uh, exceed the, the half-life rule, which on a Phantom is one into hull. So right now, uh, Garrett's only sitting on one Sigma at half points. He's only sitting with 25 points It is board. nice, though, that small ships, you do get half points Huge. for it, though. Huge. Love that change. Uh, you know that you did put in some work there, and yeah. it shows in the final score. And as you can see on a Phantom, getting it down to one, you know, two hull left is not exactly easy. So you did earn the half points, and that's a really good change, I think. It's, it's it just keeps it clean across the board, and, you know. And we, we've also currently seen there's not that many small base point fortresses in the game currently. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it'll change when Kylo's out and other stuff like that. But like right now, I think the only real points fortresses for small bases are the defenders. Like, you know, they're <laughs> right because they're like a thousand points anyways. And, but you know, it's very difficult to kill a defender in this edition, especially considering now they have four shields and three hull. You, you got to get four shields off a defender before right. it's half points, but it is also worth, you're not bringing too many of those. Exactly. And it is also uh half points on a defender is still worth one full ship that would have had four health anyway. So it is, again, it's, there's balance, a lot more balance than we haven't seen in a while. Now. Yeah, I'm really happy with a lot of the changes that they've made for a second edition. So this is an interesting turn for me. I'm not sure. This is where I would all, it would all fall apart for me because I would not know what to do with all of my cloaks, decloaks. Do you want to keep the pressure on? Is this where you run away? Phantom 4 is in danger of being left alone by itself. Um, Phantom 3 is not going to be able to decloak, so I bet we just see a hard one ship right with that to try to peg off any of the S loops. Uh, it's just what does Garrett, what does Ryan do with the other one? So if he wants to be aggressive, he decloaks Phantom 4 ship right and back, and does the one bank ship left to keep his arc there. He, I don't know what he does with two. Maybe he gets it out of dodge. Maybe he's a maniac like me and he cloaks it forward and then K turns with it, because that's what I would do if I had four of them. 
Um, but we'll see what he does. He's been doing great so far, so I'm interested to see what he's going to yeah, do this time. Yeah, so it's a part, lot of decision making. Yeah, and I think that's where the benefit of bringing this kind of a list to one of our kind of events is you don't have to fly it for six rounds. <laughs> you can fly it for two and then move on to something that's a little bit simpler to fly. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see what he does here. Okay. So I'm, I'm expecting hard one lefts from both those two ships then. I wonder if being on the stream encouraged both of these guys to show off with their crazy tie lists. Here. I hope so, because honestly, this is really fun. This has been a very interesting game to see. This is the kind of stuff we love to see. We love to see interesting, unique lists. Again, I've never in my life seen five interceptors on one side of the table. I've seen five of them. Actually, I've never even seen five full stop. Maybe right. in an epic game, but that's about it. So this is really cool to see the different types of list building and the different list that people are bringing out to these kinds of events and it's exciting and and we're early enough into the world and you know this this weekend has generally never been a meta focused premiere generally we try to bring weird and fun interesting stuff to try to test Which out and is have a fun the point time. of the pto exactly that's the, the that's the um idea behind the philosophy behind our, our league entirely is to bring out stuff that you're conceptualizing now i mean you know the the four phantom list has seen a bit of play in the competitive world mm -hmm. because it is an interesting solid list to fly but it is also still a bit wonky and, and and unique to see so it's been pretty cool gfouse 59 thank you very much we appreciate the kind words uh vtt vive is one of the best streamers out there we love them as well we're happy to be a part of it yeah, they've really put a lot of effort into making all these overlays and back-end systems where yeah. we're scanning in lists now. It's amazing. All the magicness. Yeah, they can scan directly in. It's just it's really awesome. All right, so that guy went, ooh, that was an interesting decloak, and it fit. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that guy's <laughs> probably just going to, no, does he K-turn? Because yeah, I don't see why not. Because here's the interesting change again in 2.0 with Phantoms. Now, um, when he, if he decides, if Ryan decides to K turn next turn, he still has that evade token. Even while stressed, he can still use it to cloak. Right. Yes, that's very, very good. Because they, I think the way the card is written directly on the Phantom now, it says you know you don't take the cloak action. It's uh, you just you can you just a cloak do token. it. Yeah, you can spend it for a cloak token. I think. So I might be wrong on that, but I'm pre pretty certain you can. So it looks like Ryan is just keeping the pressure on. He moved back, so he's kind of staying in that Josie position. Yeah. And looks like he's hoping for some more blocks with that same... Yeah, I think so. I think at this point now, Sigma uh, Phantom 3 is kind of living on borrowed time, sort of. Or no, it's the one that's 3 yeah, less no, down. Hold oh, on. Okay. <laughs> I'm confused. Phantom 1 is the one that's super damaged? And oh, he's the one that we're okay, thinking about okay. the K-turn. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess you're right. You know, I think at this point now he's just trying to avoid any of the uh, incoming damage. Yeah, on make Phantom Garrett 3. keep splitting his fire. The Continually. longer you keep your guns on the board, the better. You're right, absolutely. And he still has some shields on Phantom 4. So if that one takes the brunt of the assault, he's, it looks like he's trying to make Garrett pay for any attacks he wants to take on 4 because it's going to give himself some range one shots with three. I try to sometimes do that too. If I know I'm sacrificing a ship, I try to make my opponent pay for it by putting myself in a good position with right. other ships. But we'll see. Oh, looks like we're going for a barrel roll. I think he's trying to go for uh, the straight two block. Das Greco, yes. As we're seeing, there is a lot of power in four juke phantoms. It's uh it's definitely a powerful setup. But it's also super dependent, too. If you come across three ships that have a higher initiative than you, then you're going to feel bad. Yeah, he did do the 3K. Nice. <laughs> Like you're it. so excited about the I love seeing Phantom's K-turn. I don't know. I, I always do whenever I fly them. Everyone's like, what, you're K-turning? I'm like, yeah, because you didn't see it coming. And honestly, he could he could spend four turns running around, but why would he? Wow, just... that's a big stress token. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's super stressed. You'll never forget. That's true. That's a good idea. All right. Let's see if Garrett saw those moves coming. I certainly wouldn't have because it's too much to consider. That's true. That is the thing about... And that's actually one of the interesting things for your opponents to have to deal with when you're playing against um, multiple ships. All especially ships that can decloaks. Yeah. So it looked like Garrett didn't want to fly into that maw of uh, 
a kill box that Ryan was going to potentially set up, so it looked like he tried to get around it. So Ryan's barrel roll was a beautiful decision, as we're seeing. Oh, again. yeah, absolutely. Ryan's blocks have been on point this round. I can't take that away from him at all. That's Greco, yeah. Um, the uh, Four Sigma Jukes would probably do really well with people who love flying into your kill boxes. <laughs> I would imagine that uh, 12 to 15, oh no, wait, 15 to 20 dice would be, I don't know, I failed math. 12 to 15, what is it? Three times four is 12? <laughs> yeah, okay, I failed math. <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm an artist, not a mathematician. Anyways, it's a lot of dice to throw into someone's mouth if they're going to fly directly into your, into yeah, your kill Yeah, and it's real easy to set up a kill box with all those decloaks. Yeah. Oh, thanks, uh, people. Yes, so you cannot uh, receive the evade after the decloak if you're stressed. Is that what you were implying, or he will be able to cloak but won't receive an evade after he decloaks? Because that oh, he'll is, still be stressed. That's a free ah, action. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah. cool. Good to know. That's true. Thanks for piping in. We appreciate that. But you know what? And in the same respect, that I, I think if I'm Phantom One next round, I don't bother with the cloak. I just. I don't. Well, actually, no. I do still cloak, and then you clear your stress, anyways, and then you can always take the. He the doesn't evade really action. need a decloak, though, right? No, like his positioning, he just needs just a straight up. Move. He needed to not take a shot because he has one life left, right? And so, he's not taking one. Yeah. So I think Interceptor Four is going to feel some love this round. <laughs> he's got a range one from Phantom Two and a range two. It looks like from Phantom Four, and potentially a range three from Phantom One. So Ryan has been successful in setting up at least three ships shooting at one ship each round. And that's how he's been able to take down one interceptor per round. That's like textbook how you play X-Wing. Especially a swarmy, jousty list. And, you know, Ryan's played some pretty awesome lists in the past. We've seen him on stream as yeah. well. And he's, he's been playing some pretty... Very skilled He always player. plays pretty textbook quality as well. Because it looks like we have a range three shot activating... Yeah, starting with Phantom 4. Yeah, he's going to check for the range 1. Oh, that looks like he had it. It might be close. I guess they decided it's range oh, 2 on the table. Two. Okay, and that's a hit crit. And there's always the option to get great rolls and then juke 1 and force to spend the evade. Which he will. Yeah, absolutely. And then he's going to take the range 1 shot from Phantom 2, I would assume. If, if I was Ryan, that's the shot that I would take next. Unless he's going to measure Phantom 1. I think he's going to see what he does there. See if he can strip another token, maybe. Oh, shooting at the same one. I believe it's because uh, Phantom 2 has two range one shot options. So if I, uh, <gasps> That's a really go. good roll. Ryan's trying to maximize. He's trying to optimize and maximize. That's not the greatest roll. That's going to be hit crit into that interceptor. And that'll, that'll get that one. Yeah, I think that's going to get him. He yeah, he's yeah. got the evade token. So that's three through, and that's definitely going to kill him. I mean, at that point, it's not going to matter. He already had damage sensor array. That guy is gone. So that's why Ryan decided to then not... That's why Ryan decided to activate that one first, because now he doesn't have to use the range he's one shot. He's got another on range one shot exactly. he can take. So you can see he is absolutely optimizing like a machine this game. I mean, hats off to him. He's also getting some pretty great dice rolls, like that one right there. Again, looks like a hit. Hit, hit. He's deciding to spend a... Nope, no need. He's got juke. He has no other focus. He'll juke one of those, and that's going to be... That's another stripped token yep. from Garrett. Yep. So Garrett's attack dice have been... Neutered every single neutered round. Neutered every he round, He hasn't had a token yeah. yet, That's he? one of the advantages of shooting first, is yeah. when your opponent's shooting back, they don't have their tokens left. Yeah, and that's also one of the advantages to the, the Phantom Swarm, is that you've got double tokens. Going yeah. Into every engagement, almost. I mean, Ryan's flying it quite well. I'm very, very impressed. It's also been a situation as we're seeing definitely 2.0 now. You can definitely see how it's the power curve has, has flattened out. And it's been now about variance is so huge that like we've seen like, you know, Ryan's averaging hit crit on every single die. But because he has those tokens, he's been able to just juke, just yeah. completely wear down these interceptors that have been forced to not have tokens on the return fire oh, shots. We've got a judge at the table. Looking for their checking arc, a range one arc? Three, okay. If the shot is even in arc. Ah, okay. So it looks like Gary's trying to shoot at the phantom that's already damaged instead of trying to chew through the other one. But I mean, at the end of this round of firing, the Garrett's going to be on two interceptors. One of which is full health, one of which is oh. not so full. Nothing. Blanks. 
Sometimes you need a... Uh, Sometimes you just need dice to go your way. So you could roll four crits, you it know? It happens. Oh. Or you could roll two blanks and two eyeballs. Again. Oh. It's hurting my heart to see his dice rolls. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like four to four. Back to four on there. A hit crit. And he's got the evade token anyways. Now he's deciding to take the shield damage. To, I'm going to probably assume he takes the shield. Yeah, yeah. number four hasn't been damaged yeah. yet. You want that decl- You want that cloak in this situation because he probably wants the cloak and maybe block the K-turns. Or... Look at that spread out damage. Ryan's probably so happy with that right now. Yeah, this has been really, really effective play on Ryan's part. He's been flying very, very well. He must have eaten his Wheaties this morning because he's been on point. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would like to see him play that for six rounds and see what round six looks like. Yeah, but. I would. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's made me a believer in this list for a league night match or, uh, right. or a one-off game, but I don't think I could ever fly this. As much as I adore phantoms, I don't think I could fly four of them. I might, fly, I might try flying three of them, though. I'm just so happy that you can fit Whisper, Echo, and like a good ship in a list. <laughs> it's the dream. Yeah, until they, until they increase the price and everything in January. Both the surviving interceptors are full health. Okay. Yeah. So we're just we're just gonna update our overlays. It looks like both of Garrett's interceptors are full health. But unfortunately for Garrett, he's still sitting on only one half health phantom. Who's he's who's still gonna be safe for another round. <coughs> Provided Ryan doesn't fly that phantom over anything. And you can see that Ryan did not uh decloak or sorry, did not cloak Phantom Two. Sorry, Phantom One. So he's probably just going to do like a two Clear that kids. stress. Yeah, exactly. He's in a great position. Yeah, there's no, there's no point not to. The problem is for Garrett now, do you do you just, you know, do you do S loops and just go for it? Or do you just try to get out of dodge? Because I, I feel like Phantom 4 and Phantom 2 are both going to do hard ones. And then Phantom 3 is probably going to do a hard 2 ship right. And then Phantom 1, he's going to set up yet another kill box. This is a tough one. Phantom 3 as well did not declo did not cloak. You're right. It looks like he did not take the token. Yeah, you're in, in where where Phantom 3 is, he wouldn't have wanted. The only cloak option he would have had would have been to cloak forward, and then that would have put him way out of that area where he wants to be, I think. I feel like he's going to want a hard one or hard two with Phantom 3. So I think you'll see Phantom 4 do a decloak ship left and then tuck in right behind that giant asteroid. Uh, and I think you might see Phantom 2 decloak ship right and fit into that spot. And then he'll, or she will, we don't know. It's an unnamed pilot. They. Not they. The individual flying that ship will hard uh, one probably its ship left. Uh, I would expect to see uh, intercept uh, Phantom 3 hard right to the right. And then Interceptor 1's going to clear, sorry, Phantom 1's going to clear stress with some sort of a bank maneuver. So either Ryan and I just fly the exact same way, or maybe I actually know how to fly Phantoms. I don't know. We'll see. I'm curious to see what Garrett's going to do. Because I feel like no matter what he does, he knows he's getting stuck in some sort of kill box. Yeah. Yeah, and the one that he wants to shoot, he can't shoot. And the second one that he'd want to shoot is going to be difficult for him to shoot. Unless he sloops. And but he has he's been seeing his he um, needs those tokens exactly not having tokens is not helping very much now they can he can do the three bank and then he can focus and then afterburner for a boost if he wants to get that you know max range trick clear and come back around the bottom of the board uh, but we'll see oh you called that D cloak as well mm. There's only 15 minutes left in the round. Are we doing hour rounds? Hour 15. Hour 15. Yeah. 
think that's plenty of time for this game to see a, an ending. Yes. It, yes, it's definitely, unfortunately, in a certain situation, not looking the greatest for Garrett. He is definitely outshipped. He's literally got half as many ships as his opponent. And uh, he's been token starved this whole matchup, not been able really to get anything started. So I bet you you'll see a barrel roll here then. <laughs> ah, there you go. I finally didn't call it right once. For <laughs> once, I didn't call it right. There you go. You called that one. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Clear that giant Gigantic stress. Gigantic pile of stress, that uncomfortableness. And that stunned pilot hasn't affected him at all. No, luckily. And the evade makes sense. It activates your juke. It allows you to have a cloak potentially at the end of the round. That's the right call for the phantoms there. Excuse me. Uh, William Crittenden will double check that for you. We when did we start our timer at? They were saying they thought it started at an hour. Yeah, how long were the rounds? One hour or an hour fifteen? Hour fifteen. We're just gonna confirm clock. Um, we'll just double check that for you. Thank you for being on that. I actually don't remember now if we started it an hour ago or forty five minutes ago. <laughs> One of the most unobservant streamers. Right? Well, I mean, I, oh, I can't even lie. I've had my coffee this morning, but it's been a long week. Oh, so that was looks like that was a two forward. Mm. Or it might have been a potential K turn. Yeah, Ryan again with a good block. He's blocked at least one interceptor every single round. And uh, William Crittenden, it looks like we were going we're gonna to adjust the clock time. I think we have an adjustment coming in. Thanks for that. Keeping us honest. Interesting. Oh, and into his own ship. That's another really good kill box for... Ryan there. Yeah, and I wonder if that was a happy occurrence. I think he was. I think Ryan was going for the two straight, the three straights, the four, like the the four straight, like that open area there. Right. I think that's what he was looking to set it up in. But I think he'll take this even more because now he's gonna have. He's gonna have three shots on that one ship interceptor, yeah. and so far, what we've seen, three shots have been enough for Ryan to kill a ship. Yeah, even though the Phantoms have lost their die, they're still very effective. Yes, yes, absolutely, especially with double tokens and a juke. So you're looking at a range one shot, four dice, with an evade token. He's going to fire off that guy first. It would be difficult. Pugliese, you're probably right. I don't see Interceptor 4 surviving. Now, here we go. Ryan rolled average and juke that one and doesn't matter. So that's going to be two hits through on that Interceptor, who still has two potential arcs. So I bet you you'll see Ryan activate ship uh, Phantom 1. Because he's been nothing if not calculating. Yeah, Interceptor 4 is one that just took two damage. And we're assuming that Ryan's going to activate uh, ship uh, Phantom 1 because he's been... Yes, he is. He's been <laughs> calculating. He's been precise. He's been... He's been Sith-esque. He knows exactly round. what he's doing. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Is that just a crit? No, oh, those just are focus. eyeballs. Hey, finally he does not roll exactly what he needs to do to kill a ship. So now he'll probably activate four to try to kill that interceptor. Yeah, that's a range two shot again, which he'll probably spend the focus if it comes up. Uh, that'll be a focus, I think, for two hits or hit crit. Hit yeah, crit. Yeah, hit crit. And he's going to juke that one result. That guy does not have it. It's not going to matter. He's going to die. It's going to be a crit. This has been pretty savage, unfortunately, for Garrett. It's not, it's not as if he's been laying down here or anything like that. It's just Ryan's just been playing a bit too calculated, a bit too perfect. That juke really hurts. The juke has definitely been brutal this game. It's it has been the star, and now I can see there's <laughs> been some like decrying of it over there on the on the on the inter, on the interwebs because one juke isn't so bad, 
two jukes is a problem, three is really problematic, and four is just a brutal. nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah, fuel. as we're seeing this round, what it happens, you just grind your opponent into dust, shot by shot. So that was a range one from interceptor. No. Oh, no, literally nothing's allowed to go Garrett's way. Unfortunately, this round. Natural two evades. Yeah. So he's got one left. It doesn't even have a shot this round. Because that was Garrett's only shot this turn. And now Ryan's got to decide whether or not he decloaks or whether or not he takes cloak actions or not. You take that one for sure. Because you want to decloak that one ship right and just set up yet another kill box. I'd probably take the cloak. There's on. so many decisions even yeah. after the shooting has happened. Yes. So he's just going to go ahead and cloak all cloak of them. Cloak them all. And basically make it impossible for uh, the interceptor to get anywhere. And still, man, honestly, managing to hold on to an obscene amount of MOV as well currently. Oh, yeah, for sure. Still that, sitting on 175. That, that Sigma has been sitting with one health since, since the first opening round. engagement, yeah. Yeah. Because he was able to get in behind everybody and just, like, unbelievable. That's really good flying. Mm hmm. Problem is for me, if I'm flying two of the same ship, they gotta be painted so I can tell which one's which. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> or you gotta have those little numbers on them in real life. I don't ever use the numbers because I always, here's the thing, I used to always fly named pilots, so I always used to paint my ship. So, like back when in, in 1.0, when you could fly two defenders, I always had two different colors. So, right. I always, like, my, my Riyadh was always purple. Like, that's what she was. My vestry was always white. Like, I always knew which one was which. Yeah. But now if you're flying, like, I, I do the same thing if I fly an unnamed one. Try like, flying eight ties. I was gonna say, how I couldn't, I could never, I can't even fly one tie. I don't understand. <laughs> but the interesting thing that we're seeing, though, is we are still seeing, like, a swarm of sorts in 2.0, but we're seeing swarms like this, like, four or five ships that are all, like, the same type, but sometimes a bit chunkier. Like, we're seeing a butt, like, the bomber swarms, obviously... That's nasty. It is what it is. It's nasty. Let's let's not beat around the bush. It's tough. They're they are effective to the nth degree for sure. <laughs> That's um, one way of putting right? it. I wish we we could see some A wing swarms come back, uh, but you know we just saw if you were watching last week's system open bunkies back to being a god again. With the, we always was, but still like seven Z's and a Q wing. Like what the hell is that? That's amazing. So two point has got some awesome stuff in it too. We're seeing some really. You wouldn't think that people would be running like four space tugs and and three other ships. There's just it's so many so possibilities good. with with the move to 200. It makes it a lot more fun to have so much more variety. Yeah, you're not flying against the same three or four archetypes. I think we're going to see a huge variety on our stream today I and tomorrow. I hope so. We're going to try our best to curate that as best as we can too. But we want to make hard sure we, with three lists of person. We don't know what the players are going to play or what they're going to fly. So we'll do our best to bring some dynamic players to the stream and they usually bring some dynamic lists. But everybody, I was kind of peeking out there on some ships I saw on the table and there was a nice, healthy mix of stuff. There was some cool stuff out there. Yeah, I imagine this is not the matchup that Garrett wanted with his uh, five interceptors. Yeah, I won't. I won't lie to you though. At the beginning of the match, I was like, "This is going to be super." Um, yeah, you know, even it could have went different if the player order was opposite. Because he had the ship advantage, right? So he, you know, he was always going to have technically more dice. But it's just Ryan was able to overcome that by always having one ship blocked. He token starved Garrett more almost tokens. entirely, right? Yeah. So. I gotta say that that's where that's where the big difference has been, and then as we've seen, the Juke has been an all star in this one. Yeah, I didn't realize how powerful it was gonna be till I saw it in play. Yeah, like I've never run a list that had more than two of them in the list, but after seeing this, I'm like, yikes! You can see how de how debilitating it can be against your opponent, especially if you can concentrate all those arcs on the same ship. That's when it really becomes powerful. Well, I see another kill box getting formed here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's almost nowhere for Garrett to go, to be honest with you. If he hard ones that interceptor, it's, you know, it, then now what is, the thing is, what's Ryan going to do with this one? He's going to want to try to block with it. So does he hard one and then barrel roll it? Or is he, that's going to be like a one bank there probably? Yeah. And then you'll see a one bank probably from ship two, from Phantom two. One bank ship left. This whole game has stayed in this top one corner. One corner, you're right. Yeah, it's all, that's the thing about Phantoms. They can move without really having to move very far. Yeah. 
And I think uh, another point we should, if we if we were to look back on this game in the future, you'd see that you know, um, turn zero was pretty big for Ryan as well because the he has that open space to play with, and I'm assuming that's why he decided to set up there because right. he has the most maneuverability for his ships there. The only other place that he would have wanted this game to take place would be uh, the top right of the uh, of Garrett's uh, the opposite right side corner. Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah those uh, asteroids have barely come into play. Mm-hmm. Maybe Garrett could have used that to his advantage. I mean, the interceptors are more evasive and stuff like that. He might have wanted to try to drag the fight through there. Um, I guess he was just trying to rely on his firepower. Five ships with three I mean, dice. that's that's a fair assumption to make. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like it was a joust, joust versus joust swarm, and I just think it the the uh, maneuverability of the Phantom and the double token stack was one of the big deciding factors. Now, it would be, I would think Ryan will probably do a barrel roll here to try to block the two bank. Or he might just sit there. Nope. Okay. Could have a... Sh mm, no, probably won't have a shot. Now we'll see if Garrett was wily and he did a three, three sloop to the ship left. It only has to take one shot. We'll see what happens. I'm very curious. Turned right into the madness. Uh, Which ship is he bumping? I think he's going to bump... We used to put the tracks down, I think. We use those handy new templates. Apostasis, that's a very interesting question. He's, uh, he says, I wonder how this would have gone with four sabers, all with Duke as well. So it would have been literally 4v4. Um... That's an interesting concept, too. The I th maneuverability I th differences would be interesting. Yeah, because the sabers are tighter, but then the fact is that the Sigmas would still theoretically, I feel, have the advantage. They have the life lead, and they have the positional, the ability to decloak. The automatic evades that they're basically taking. Yeah. yeah. They'll be able to generate the evade way more frequently. I think that's the, that's the not the problem, but the uh, the interesting thing about this list is because... Yeah, Juke's not as effective on other ships. Especially just, an Interceptor, because it only gets one token. If that's going to have to Juke all the time. The only thing I'd be interested in trying a Juke on, I probably would say, would be Soonerfell, because you could at least then get the focus evade. Yeah, Puyas, that's exactly what we were just talking about. The, the power is coming from the fact that they're double tokened. And Interceptors, as we all know, really need to have tokens to survive. Spend that focus. Yeah, for another two. He's going to juke that one. No tokens, that's two. <laughs> Was that him we just heard? I think so. <laughs> that might have been Garrett saying. We're in a closed room, but we can still hear some of oh, what's happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, he, de he technically, he should still take that range one shot. Uh, Just to Phantom see three, if he can get some MOV. He earned it. Let's hope he gets something through. Nah, one, one. hit only. Oh. Hey, finally, I used to spend the advantage of Savage. <laughs> oh, nasty. Ryan, you savage, savage man. That was a fantastic game. It was actually really exciting Good to watch. Good opening. Yeah, hopefully we'll bring more of that kind of excitement.